Okay, so I got another question for you. Mm -hmm. And maybe you do know the answer to this. How long was it before? Because in this moment, you wake up from your surgery. Mm -hmm. The doctor at some point breaks the news. You're paralyzed in your right arm and right hand. You'll probably never play football again. In Mm -hmm. everything that you worked for, your entire life, it's gone. Blink of an eye. Tell me about the processing of that and how long did you go into a depression? How long was it before you had a mind shift and understand that I got to trust this process? God has something greater for me. Absolutely. So um, initially they didn't say like um, your arm is paralyzed. Like initially they didn't say that what they used was they said it's probably it's probably over. Your football career is probably over. And because of the brachial plexus injury, like it's such an injury to where nobody can really answer in terms of if anything is gonna come back. Like they don't know if your finger flexion is gonna come back. They don't know if your arm movement is gonna come back. The only thing they knew was your arm probably will never be the same again. Mm-hmm. But they didn't know at that moment it would be permanently paralyzed. But what they did say was, your football career is probably over. But I didn't believe it. I was like, man, no way. I put in too much work, you know? I was like, man, I never cheated. You know, like, I've been working from this from the time I was a kid. Like, I was like, God, like, nah, God won't let me go out like this. Like, surely, like, let me get the contract, take care of my family. Then if something go down, you know, like, I done secured my family's future. But I was like, I put in too much work. And so I got out of the hospital, you know, within three days. And I wanted to get back to practice, right? They wanted to send me back to Atlanta, unenroll me. And I was like, I'm not going back to Atlanta. I was like, man, can y'all order me a dungeon sling and a Velcro strap? It was like, but ink, you can't play. I was like, it's not about playing a game. It's like, I just want to go to practice with my teammates because I knew I needed to be back in that environment. Mm-hmm. I needed to get back in a routine. I need to go back to class. I need to still work out. Because if I go back to Atlanta, they just going to say, Ink, you tried, man. Good job. Now you can sit on the porch with us in the trap. You can just chill, make excuses, and we can say, well, Ink tried. You know, like, nah, I'm going to finish what I start. I'm going to still get my degree. Even though I got a right with my left hand, it's all good. I'm going to figure it out. And so I was out of that hospital in three days, man. I was back in class back at practice, working out with my guys, and I still had staples in my body. It's amazing. That's amazing. How, how, how much rehab did you have after that, after your surgery? Oh, man, uh, years. Like, even, like, after my first surgery, I was doing rehab, and I had a second surgery in December at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I had to rehab still after that because – The grace period for my injury, for anything they said would come back, was like two and a half to three years. And they said, Ink, if you can give us two years of maybe five, sometimes seven days a week, and we'll just see what happens. And so I had to go through rehab for two years, and nobody knew what the result was going to be. And so that's why I, I came up with the saying of, can you be committed to the process of what you're doing without being emotionally attached to the results of what you're doing. In other words, if you don't know what the outcome is going to be, if the outcome or the situation changes, can you still show up every single day and give everything you got to a situation when it doesn't turn out the way you want it to be? Because what happened was it changed my whole mentality, man. It changed my whole spirit because I I didn't have an answer. Mm -hmm. My friends, they couldn't tell me, if you come ink, your arm is going to work. They'll come one day and have an arm skateboard. They'll come one day and have balloons for me to blow in to try to get, you know, like my ribs right. Like I'll come one day, they'll have another contraption and be shooting dye in my back and die down my arm. And so it wasn't an answer. But every single day I had to bring positivity. I had to bring a mentality. I had to bring a spirit to an environment that I wasn't guaranteed anything. At what point do you and your young mind, you're going through this thing, And you're fighting because I got to believe you want to get back out there. You want to see some change. Even if if it's the littlest thing, 
like my fingers can wiggle. No, no question. Yeah. At what point did the reality set in? This ain't gonna happen. Like th- th- this, mm-hmm. it's done. Yeah, probably about a year and a half uh, later, when I was in uh, one of my rehab sessions for my arm. And I would do this thing to where like every day I would jump up off the table and I would always run over to my PT and I would grab him by his shoulder and I would be like, JD, what we got today, man? Like you seeing anything today, just joking with him. And on this day I ran over to him and I grabbed his shoulder and he kind of slid from under me. And he went to kind of walk off and I jogged over to him and I grabbed his shoulder and slowly turned him around and he was crying. And like, this is my guy, you know what I'm saying? Like. He talked trash in the rehab session. Like, this is my guy. And he was like, Ink, I'm sorry, man. He's like, we're not seeing a thing, right? And he was like, we want it to work. And I was like, I do too. And he was like, man, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, your arm probably would never work again. Your hand probably would never work again. And I was like, physically. And he was like, what do you mean physically? I was like, physically, JD. Like, physically, my arm, my right arm and hand inside a commission. I said, but I'm going to use this arm in his hand every day of my life for the rest of my life by the way that I live my life. I said, J.D., I never let a situation or circumstance define my life. And he was like, that's right. And at that point, I knew it was going to be one of these things to where I was going to be an example and a reflection of how to handle adversity. It wasn't so much of my arm getting back to the point that I wanted it to be. It was how I used my arm in a situation that I was, I was brought into to affect people's lives and environments that I was blessed to go into. Now, is this something, cause you're still a young man, you gotta be 20 years old at this yeah, point. Yeah, I was 20, yeah, I was 20, 20 years old. Is this something that just came to you in that moment or is it something you learned sitting with the chaplain in, in discipleship? Is it your dad? Like, where did you, at 20 years old, most people would have been depressed. They would have been yeah. angry. They would have been <laughs> cursing God. They got this close. This Absolutely. you can smell the money. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, you are guaranteed first round draft pick. Absolutely. What is your reaction in that moment? Are you feeling a depression? Like, how did you get to that point? It was never a uh, depression. It was more so disappointment. And like the thing that helped me, man, was like those people that we talked about being in my life because all of them are still there. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget. I was apologizing. Uh, one day just to them and they were all in the room and I was like I'm sorry man I had tears rolling down my face and they were like what are you sorry for ain't and I was like man I can't make it to the league and I can't pay you guys back and my coach man like that signed me up when I was a kid he was like think you think we did what we did for you so you could make it to the NFL I was like yeah I think that was part of it he's like man bump the NFL I don't even watch the NFL he was like, I did what I did for you so you could become a great man one day. He said, the only thing I want from you, man, is for you to pay forward what we did for you in the lives of other people. He said, it was never about a sport. He said, I just want you to be a decent man. He said, one day if you bless with children, just be a decent father. If you bless with a wife, just be a decent husband. You know, like make your life count. He said, it's not it, man. It's not the end of your life. And my mother, you know, she was like one bad chapter on the final book, eh? Like, this is it. Like, this is only a beginning. And I took all those words, man, that positive encouragement, like my father. Like, he was there. You know, he stayed with me for a month, you know, helping me do things, helping me. Hold on. Co- what, what you mean yeah. he stayed with you for a month? Because you, up until that point, you never lived under the same roof with your dad, correct? Ah, uh, no. No, man. And for the first time, he was like, I'm going to stay with you for a month just to walk with you, right? Take you to rehab for your arm. I'm going to take you to church. I'm going to take you to discipleship. I'm going to help you get things in order. And that was big for me, right? Mm-hmm. Because like, like you said, I've never been on the same roof as my father like that. You know, I never stayed with my father under the same roof. And for him to come and stay in our little college house and be there, kick it with me and my boys, but more so for me to get that father and son time, for me to talk to him, you know, bounce things off of him. For him to answer some of those questions, that was big for me. And all of those words and all of those things, it helped me get back on my feet and helped me use my situation to try to go out and be a blessing. 
What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.